Welcome and uh, thank you for joining us. This is our latest version of our Secure Your Space training. And uh, this is step one of the seven steps to earthquake safety. Uh, and where uh, we put that first because it is really essential to uh, your safety that you have things secured so they won't fall or fly or be, uh, or maybe block your exit. And uh, uh, that becomes really important, uh, of course, in earthquakes, and maybe even other disasters, or maybe even just your, your pets or others moving around, you're moving around your house, you accidentally hit something and it, you don't want your TV to fall uh, over in those situations, and especially, of course, during earthquakes. So we do have all this information you're about to uh, see. And uh, the various forms, and including videos at earthquakecountry.org slash step one, and in Spanish at terremotos.org slash um, paso uno. So uh, thank you again for joining us. If you've just joined, definitely keep your sound on mute. Uh, you can uh, put chat questions uh, and, and information and need uh, for any support uh, in the chat, and we will uh, keep moving along here. So the Earthquake Country Alliance is a statewide group and many of you are members and thank you for joining us. If you're not yet a member, please do go ahead and go to earthquakecountry.org slash join like right now it would be a great time. And you can fill out our, our very uh, simple short form. That way you'll get updates about our, our activities and information uh, as, and new resources that's become developed, uh, available. Uh, we do have four regions, ECA SoCal, Central Coast, Bay Area and the Redwood Coast Tsunami Work Group, and uh, that that cover most of the counties of California as ECA regions, but all everywhere in California is part of Earthquake Country Alliance. And we're based at the University of Southern California, Southern California Earthquake Center, where myself and also um, helping to run today's webinar, Sharon Sandow, who will be uh, putting a lot of information in the chat, definitely be looking at that, clicking the links that are there to take you to the pages with that information. We will also be putting a list of the links that were shared in today's training onto the webpage uh, where you registered to attend. So that will be coming out as a reminder as well, the recording, the PowerPoint, uh, the PDF, the PowerPoint, and, the, and these links. So we're overall, we're supported by uh, funding through the National Earthquake Hazards Reduction Program. It's, FEMA manages funding that goes to states and our state California Office of Emergency Services uh, provides funding to the Earthquake Country Alliance to organize events like today and to encourage people to get better prepared to survive and recover, which includes uh, different aspects of mitigation where you're preventing potential future losses, whether it's retrofitting a building, designing a new building to current codes, or securing things inside so that they won't fall and fly and cause injury, uh, damage, or, um, or blocked exits, all these issues we're dealing with. And then our, uh, if you aren't aware, of course, our website is quakecountry.org and Spanish at terremotos.org, and we support uh, Tsunami Zone and ShakeOut. And we're not gonna say hardly anything about ShakeOut today, but of course it is coming up in October. And we already have 6.8 million, almost 6.9, a million Californians registered through their organizations and through as individuals. So we encourage you also to go to shakeout.org slash California, make sure that you're participating this year and that your uh, organizations and all the organizations you're involved with are planning to do an earthquake drill either on October 20th, the third Thursday of October, the International Shakeout Day as we call it, or uh, really you can, uh, when you register, you can indicate if you'll have your drill on another day. It's all fine any day of the year. As I mentioned earlier, uh, securing your space is the uh, most important step for earthquakes because it's what causes the most injuries and damage. Uh, of course, you might have a building collapse, but even in like the Northridge earthquake, there are about 200 buildings that had a partial or, or, or complete collapse. Um, and, but there were uh, uh, thousands, tens of thousands of buildings that didn't yet had all their contents thrown around inside uh, causing damage. So the, the injuries really are coming from that, the broken glass that results and just being hit by things, things falling over, 
breaking. And of course, our TVs com today compared to 1994 are very much easy, you know, more likely to fall over if you kind of look at them in, in, a, in the wrong way. I mean, they're just going to, they're so, uh, you know, top heavy and or very thin. And, uh, and so compared to the big boxy TVs of 1994. So uh, those are particular uh, uh, item that people often spend a lot of money for that you can secure so they won't fall and break. This is one example. Just so FYI, we also have materials in 15 languages, uh, including uh, uh, how to secure things, how to be safe during earthquakes, how to, uh, uh, including for people with disabilities. Uh, a lot of great resources. You can find earthquakecountry.org slash languages. I'd like to remind everybody that another new resource that has become available in the recent years is earthquake early warning. This requires you to have either a special new type of app on your phone or your system, your, your building might start to have a system built in like a, in your PA system or may, at some point, maybe even automated systems that will bring elevators to the floor and open and, and other aspects like that. But most people right now are, act, are getting these alerts by either having an app on their phone, such as the MyShake app, uh, or in some areas, there are, uh, uh, there are other apps too. That app goes the entire West Coast now, California, Oregon, and Washington. You may also get for, for larger earthquakes, a wireless emergency alert, which is like a kind of like an amber alert on, directly to your phone. You can go to earthquake.ca.gov to learn about all these different options. And the key thing is that also, you may have had earthquake apps on your phone that tell you where the earthquake was, that's different. That's coming a minute or two after the earthquake in most instances. Um, this is a new type of app, which is telling you that the earthquake shaking is on its way. And uh, you wanna make sure you have the right type of app and you wanna have the settings set correctly. So follow all the instructions uh, for doing so. All right, uh, for this webinar, we have a disclaimer uh, that you can read along with me. And of course, you know, we're recommending various uh, aspects that will prevent damage. Is it 100% for sure? You know, it really depends all on the earthquakes that actually happen, how close you are and how accurately and, uh, you have, uh, or, or you have in, uh, installed the items. Uh, that's, that's a big factor too. So that's why we do these webinars, to make sure you're actually installing things correctly. We've seen pictures and video of very unusual ways of installing some of these materials. And so that's why uh, it's important to, to pay close attention. Uh, but the you know earthquakes have a variety of, of impacts based on the location, also the construction of buildings and damage to your uh, furniture and other contents in your building can vary. And even from building to building, even room to room. So that's why the Earthquake Country Alliance, the University of Southern California and our partners uh, uh, from Ready America and Safety Proof, uh, our state and federal sponsors, uh, do not offer any guarantees that these actions and fastener products will prevent all earthquake damage and do not warrant the performance or effectiveness of any products or guidance uh, provided during this webinar. There's just too many factors that we can't uh, foresee. We're not going out and actually installing this in your space and making sure everything is done perfectly. Uh, and even if it is, then you have this, the, the uniqueness of your building and location that might cause the wall to fall down with the item. Uh, and that, that can, um, uh, of course, limit the usefulness of the, what you secure. All, we do disclaim any liability for the uh, damages arising using the materials and without warranties. So if, you have, if anybody has any questions about that, uh, this is basic, you know, we, we can't make, we can't say that everything's earth, anything's earthquake proof, but we do know that, that the more you can secure things so they won't fall or fly, the less likely you're going to have damage and injury. Okay, so uh, finally, before we turn over to our main presenter today, uh, I have a uh, poll question I'm going to ask you, and you, this should come up on your screen. And you can choose the answers. Um, there's two questions. Why have you joined us today? And what sector are you with? So answer the first one, and then you can answer the next one.
we almost got everybody involved. So uh, uh, I read that wrong. We need a lot more people to participate. <laughs> uh, almost halfway through. Excellent. So do question one and do question two. So, uh, of course, a lot of individual participation, community group, uh, healthcare. Uh, we know that thanks a lot of you participating. The importance of doing this in the healthcare sector, in the independent living center, uh, or of, in other places where um, uh, people may live and be uh, cared for. Uh, super important that that this type of work is done there to prevent injuries, damage, and uh, all right, looks like we're almost done. And uh, Denise in the chat just mentioned, uh, I assume you're, that you're a hotel general manager. You know, uh, hotels are another great place for this work to be done. Maybe not just for, for safety, but for uh, preventing theft. And uh, you know, there may be some other benefits of, of having things secured and strapped down. Uh, but also, of course, preventing injury to people who are coming to California and don't know about earthquake safety and what they need to do and what might be a hazard. So it's really great to, to uh, think about doing that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end the poll um, and share the results. So um, uh, I don't see things exactly like you do, but you should be seeing that a lot of you here, 51% to secure items in your own space. But importantly, it, uh, also make sure your workplace is secured and others helping family or friends, helping your neighbors. It really is a key thing, especially if you have the tools to do this type of work, go help your neighbor do the same thing. And that's a, in your interest too, because you're perhaps less neighbors you need to go help rescue, help get out of their space, help remove a bookshelf from, on top of them, um, especially those who are uh, uh, maybe more vulnerable to such things. Okay, with that, I'd like to uh, introduce our presenters. Uh, Glenn Granholm is a vice president from Safety Proof, and Trevin Reese is also a vice president with Ready America. These are two of the companies that provide uh, uh, these materials, uh, and you can uh, find them in home improvement stores and online and through Amazon. And, uh, a lot of the materials that we're going to be talking about today. Glenn is joining us uh, in person uh, via Zoom. Trevin, it, unfortunately, is uh, not able to be with us uh, uh, live, uh, but is by recording. So we have from previous workshops that uh, he per uh, participated in and did some live demos. We have the video of those demos. So uh, with that, I will uh, turn over to Glenn. Thank you very much, Mark. And welcome, everyone. My name is Glenn Granholm, and I'm going to be your guide today as we dive into the basics of what is called non structural earthquake damage mitigation. You know, uh, Mark and I have been doing these webinars now, I think, going on a couple of years, and each of them covers a different aspect of the seven steps to earthquake safety. Today, we're gonna to take a deep dive into step one. Uh, after an initial overview as to why you should take any steps in the first place to secure the contents of your home, we'll get into the concepts behind non-structural damage mitigation. We'll show you some how-tos, show you some particular action steps that you can take uh, to make not only your home, but the homes of your loved ones safer in an earthquake. So let's dig in, shall we? Do the next slide. We live in what is called earthquake country. What does that mean? I'm sure a lot of you have seen a colorful map like the one on your screen here. This type of map is called an earthquake hazard map. We all get it. The redder the color, the worse the news. This is a probability map, and it shows the frequency of earthquakes anticipated over the next 100 years. So we can see here that there will most likely be fewer earthquakes in 
Arizona than in Nevada or Colorado during that time and much less than we have here. Still, when an earthquake does hit, a 7.0 earthquake in Arizona will be just as devastating as the one in the neighboring states. So the point is hazard maps show how often earthquakes hit. They don't necessarily show how bad they are when they do. Next slide. So why focus on non-structural earthquake damage? Most certainly earthquakes have revealed to us a huge inventory of structures that have vulnerabilities in extensive shaking. These buildings include, or these include buildings with features called soft stories, like the top left, cripple walls, like the top right, or unreinforced masonry like the middle. Other seven, other seven step aspects will cover these essential retrofits to buildings. Proper earthquake insurance is covered in another step as well. But today we're going to discuss non-structural contents of buildings. Why lead with that? Next slide. FEMA estimates that future California earthquakes will cause massive non-structural damage. This uh, slide shows a clip from an article from the U UC San Diego School of Engineering website. It says there are 75% of the future, uh, percent of the potential future earthquake related losses and insurance claims will be because of non-structural aspects of a building. And then in addition to that, two thirds of all the injuries. So when we combine the high probability of an earthquake, that red zone on the map, with the fact that all, most of the damage in that earthquake will be due to non-structural elements, it makes the most sense to address that first. And that's why that's step one. Many people, during COVID spent a lot of time in their residence, much more than any other building. So maybe we should start by looking at how to make our homes safer. It all begins with a hazard hunt. We're going to look around our environment and see if we can identify potential hazards. The idea here is we're walking ourselves through an earthquake. So we have a pre-recorded video with Trevin showing a hazard gun. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my home. Today, we're going to be going on a hazard hunt to help protect you, your friends, your family, and children, and to keep them safe during the event of an earthquake. So if you guys want to come on inside and identify a few of these items. So right off the bat in the entranceway, we have Right here is a giant mirror. So you're really gonna to wanna to have this secured as it's really important during an earthquake. It's, this is gonna create a lot of broken glass. Additionally, in the entranceway, we have this stand. So you're gonna to want to secure that as well. Those exit pathways are gonna be very vital to making sure that you can exit safely after the earthquake happens. It's really important to remember to exit after the shaking stops. So we're gonna go through a different part of the room, the house. So if you follow me this way, let's check it out. All right, welcome to my office space. While we're still setting this up, it's really important, everybody, that you get these items secured. TVs, computer monitors, those can turn into flying projectiles during an earthquake. So it's really important that you get these secured. You can use the gel pads, the quake hold putty, or the home electronic straps. So once you have those secured, you know that inside the office space, you will be safe during an earthquake. So now we've identified those items, I can take you to another part of my home and we can show you the living room. So if you guys follow me. All right, now we're in my living room. You can see items that need to be secured in here. So what do you think needs to be secured? Have you identified any items? All right, perfect. So right off the bat, you can easily see that we would have to secure our TVs. 
Additionally, when you're securing the TVs, you wanna make sure that you also secure the credenzas. That's going to be really important. If you secure the TV to the top of this, it's not gonna do any good if you don't have the base of it secured. So we wanna make sure that you are securing both of these items. Additionally, if you don't have the uh, ability to secure it to the top of the credenza, uh, you can mount it to the wall. That's going to be very important as well. All right, if you come over here, this would be one of the other items, especially as this has a glass cover on it. It's really important that we get these paintings secured throughout the home. Additionally, you can use quake hold putty down at the two bottom corners to keep it from banging against the wall, which would create the broken glass. And now there's one last item that we have in here that we can identify, and it's additionally the vases right here. Those can turn into projectiles and go all the way across the room, creating more broken glass. And if someone is close to those, they could hit them directly. All right, now that we've done the living room, why don't we go check out the kitchen where we spend a lot of our time. Let's see it. All right, now welcome to my kitchen. So let's see if we can identify a few items in here that are gonna create the most risk during an earthquake. So I want you guys to take a second and identify those items. All right, now that you're seeing all these items in here, what do you think is the most important to have secured? question I think that would probably be the refrigerator so if those are not strapped down I really encourage you to get those secured and you can use any straps available from safety proof or quake hold it's really important that we have those items secured down as people will spend a lot of time here in the kitchen in front of the refrigerator additionally there's a few other items in here that we can't secure so what do you think well how about the bases that we have up top here so if you're standing here cooking, doing dishes, whatever it may be. When those items are not secured, those turn into, again, projectiles and will create broken glass. Broken glass is one of the biggest risks during an earthquake. Because if you get your feet cut and you go down, you're gonna be no help to anybody, to your family or to your friends, especially the children. So it's really important to have shoes close to you or on during an earthquake. Uh, additionally, we have my tortoise cage. Sorry, he's outside right now. But this is a glass cage for him. Uh, he's not going to make a guest appearance today, but we want to make sure that you're using quake hold putty or additional supplies to secure that down. So now we've gone to the kitchen, we can identify the second living room. And there's only a couple items in here that we can identify. So this is a perfect example of when you can't secure it to a credenza that you want to mount the TV to the wall. So I was able to mount this into concrete, which makes things a little more secure as I know this is going to uh, have a very strong hold, especially for a larger TV. Additionally, we have these candle holders right here, and those are made out of pure glass, so it's really important that those are secure because those will turn into projectiles. Uh, especially if they're higher up, you wanna make sure that those are secure because they, they will fly a little further. All right, and we'll go into the last room here and see if you can identify at least one more item to secure during an earthquake. So let's take a look, see what you can identify. Hopefully you guys find the one that uh, is the most important that we secure. Well, should have figured it out by now. It is this other candle holder right here. So this is a giant piece of glass that is currently not secured to the base. So it's really important, especially if you have mounted glass like this, to secure first the base to the countertop and then secure this portion right here with the quick hold putty to the base itself. Now you can be very generous on the amount you use. So now that you guys have had a chance to look inside my home, I hope you can do the same thing at yours. It's really important to identify all these items. You can pretty much get your entire house secured for the cost of the meal out with your family. So get prepared, make sure you're earthquake ready. Now back to you. Okay, so it's time to get into training. One thing I wanted to make, men, make mention uh, regarding a hazard hunt is it is likely that when you go through your own home and look about, uh, you're going to find items that are made safer simply by relocating. Uh, if there's something that's up high on a shelf that could fall and hurt you, uh, and moving that down lower, uh, it, if it's an option for you, uh, you don't need to fasten it at all. You've uh, 
you've made the environment safer. So that's another thing uh, to keep in mind. Okay, it's training time. Well, what we'll do now is provide some of the latest information and best practices on how to secure your home. During the training, questions will appear on the screen for you to answer. These questions will mirror the information we cover, so you'll be able to get all the right answers. Really, I, I, I pretty much can guarantee it. Uh, we'll also uh, break from the questions and show you some pre-recorded videos. We'll cut back to Trevin, and he'll show you actually anchoring some items uh, in the field. So we can look at the next slide and a brief history of how we got here. For years, uh, securing equipment, when it happened at all, was all done the same way. Brackets called angle clips, like you see in this picture, were used to secure items like bookshelves and file cabinets. This method of anchorage is called a mechanical attachment. The thought was doing this would keep the items from falling in an earthquake. Next slide. Well, earthquakes in the, um, in the 70s through the 90s in California showed this may not be the best way to perform this task. Uh, the, the picture on the left is actually from a shake table up at UC Berkeley. Uh, and you can see the uh, brackets actually got mangled uh, by the shaking. Now, this in engineering lingo was considered a pass, a pass test because the item didn't fall over. However, uh, those brackets are not going to hold on an aftershock or a, like what happened in Ridgecrest, an even larger earthquake in the near future. So uh, perhaps this isn't the best way to go about securing things. Let's do the next. Here's a video that kind of demonstrates mechanical attachments. I don't know if you can hear me, the mechanical attachment is down at the bottom of the refrigerator. The mechanical attachment is at the bottom of the refrigerator, right there, that big black bracket. That's what's holding this in place. So pay attention to that refrigerator and watch what happens on a shake table. We can look at the next slide. That was pretty shocking, not only for the testing people uh, who didn't expect it, uh, but I'm, I'm certain for the bracket manufacturer. Uh, we can go back one slide. There we go. So let's take a, a closer look. We set, that, we set that refrigerator upright and took a look at it. Uh, the door hinges, which are on the right, uh, and that's a, another type of mechanical attachment, they snapped right off. However, you can see the door is hanging on on the left. So how is it that door is hanging on? This is pretty much a breakthrough. The door in the photo is held in place by earthquake fasteners with two features. Uh, first, they utilize what is called a very high bonding or VHB adhesive tape. VHB is not a glue. It's an adhesive tape that forms a chemical bond. Secondly, the fastener has a flexible strap. This type of fastening allows for walls and floors to move in different directions during earthquake shaking, which is something that is pretty much a common occurrence. Next slide. So let's go to a poll question. What holds fasteners to the unit when a positive or mechanical attachment is not used, is that double stick tape, quick drying glue, very high bond adhesive tape, or a silicone sealant? Then today's training will review best practice for practices for securing uh, equipment and furniture. And it features which of these? Angle clips, through bolts, chain and flexible fastening. So if you remember that door is held on because of two specific features. One of them's in question one and one of them's in question two. So you can go ahead and submit your poll and 
um, answer those questions and respond. Then well, remember not to advance to the to the poll question which is the answer. So you all should have gotten one free if you're if you were following along. Uh, but also, Glenn, we have a question from Tamara. Tamara, if you want to unmute and ask your question. Go right ahead. You had raised your hand, so I can, maybe she's put her hand down, maybe, maybe okay. it was answered. All right, so we have um, only 33 of you have, have answered the poll so far. So uh, we need another 20 to, to actually do the poll. Now, if you, uh, is anybody having any challenge figuring out how to see the polls? It should be a, another window that will pop up. Let us know. I should answer it. Got a few more people coming in now. Thank you for. Uh, this is going to be a very interactive uh, training, so uh, we do need you to be answering the questions, and that way we'll we'll then move on. We get at least eighty percent of you. So we need up. Ah, we're at eighty uh, percent. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll, Glenn. Oh, I'm so nervous. And uh, now I'm going to share the results. So, you okay. So, that. so the um, the fasteners that that held that door on had two features. One was was they used a very high bonding adhesive tape. The acronym is VHB. All right, and that uh, outperformed screws being drilled into the side of that piece of equipment. And then secondly. Um, the other feature of that was very good job, flexible fastening. So it allows the wall and the floor to move in opposite directions in earthquakes. Very good. Okay. We're going to, I'm going to um, make this next question harder, I'm sure. So let's go to the next slide. What do we even need to get started here? Okay. Uh, adhesive fastening really is pretty simple. To get started, if you're gonna do this on your, note, your own, you need some basics. That picture in the middle, that yellow uh, oblong device, that's a stud finder. So you need a stud finder. Uh, top right, that's a cordless drill. Top left, safety goggles. And you may need some 70% isopropyl alcohol as well. A lot of times that comes with the fasteners when you purchase it, because we wanna clean the surface where that fastener was gonna be attached. So I believe that leads us to the next poll question. What item do you not need to do your home fastening? Do you not need safety goggles, power drill, L bracket, stud finder? Which one of those do you not need? Let's see how that poll goes. Almost there. So, isn't the answer what's not on this slide, Glenn? <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Uh, so, we'll end that and, and show you the results. Exceptional. So, yeah, we uh, L brackets, remember, so, so I say L bracket, but angle clips. Uh, that's really what, what was used, has been used historically. Uh, that bracket in the video we watched was basically a large L bracket. It's a piece of angle steel. Uh, and, and we don't use that when we're talking about securing contents of homes. So L bracket would be the correct answer. So let's, let's get into one of the primary examples. It's the one that stuck with me uh, the most about, about Trevin's home. Uh, and that is this um, television that's, I'm gonna use the word credenza. Uh, you, there's a lot of words, a TV on a cabinet, right? So here's the idea. 
we want to secure the non-structural element to the structure. That holds true no matter what you're fastening. It's the same concept. The non-structural element by non-structural stuff that are not the building. So we're going to attach stuff that's not the building to the building. Does that make sense? So how do you do that? Attach the non-structural item to the structure. Well, there are two key factors. One is we attach the fastener to the unit. And the other is we attach the fastener to the house. We're gonna cover both, right? However, some items in the home are like this picture. They're actually two items that are, it's not one, it's a TV on top of something. So we have a top heavy flat screen TV on top of a piece of furniture and we don't want either piece to fall in an earthquake. So just securing one of these isn't gonna cut it. In this instance, we wanna be familiar with two more terms. So I gave you, I gave you the two concepts, fastener goes to the item and the fastener goes to the structure. Here's two, two other terms I want you to know. They are anchor point and mending. So the anchor point is the location on the item and the location on the structure where the attachment is going to occur. That's the anchor point. It's the point of anchorage. Mending is the concept of connecting two or more similarly, similarly located items to one another, thus creating a lar one single large unit. So in this case, we're securing the credenza to the wall, but we're mending the television to the credenza. Anchor points and mending. So let's go to the next poll question. What two concepts are critical to consider when securing furniture? Anchor points and mending, density and mass, refrigeration or heating, color and depth. I always forget I have to answer the question too. Or Mark will think I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Almost there. I need a few more people to respond. All right, and in the poll, and here's the results. Anchor points and mending are the two concepts uh, that I really want you to remember. You know, it's not that the others, especially density and mass, don't matter. It's just for this training, it's these concepts that we really want to get across to you. So we're all speaking the same language, uh, and that when you're training this to other people, uh, you are consistent in what you're, what you're, what's being taught. Okay, so let me close that and we'll go to the next slide. So we're going to start by securing the credenza to the wall. Um, you're going to need a stud finder, electric drill, and your safety goggles. Always remember, it's essential you find the wall stud. Remember this photo from earlier in the training? There's brackets albeit angle clips on top of these bookcases, but they were not attached to the wall stud. Uh, and in the earthquake, they ripped right out of the wall. So this is not optional. You know, the local home store uh, may sell drywall anchors or molly or toggle bolt, bolts. Um, and they may, work against hold it, they may work to hold an item into the wall uh, to some degree, but these are never recommended with earthquake forces. So do not use them as an earthquake restraint. Uh, the power of an earthquake can be enormous, many, uh, many times that of an explosion. So um, a, another couple of helpful hints for you on the next slide. Uh, first of all, 
there's a specific protocol to follow to ensure that the bond sets when you're using these VHB adhesive tapes. Uh, and we'll get into that in a minute. Also, never use mending method directly to drywall. You never put adhesive on drywall and never use strap attached to an adhesive on the drywall as the way to anchor, say, a wall-mounted television. I wanna repeat that because it's an error that many first time uh, installers make when working with this type of product. Never, 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 never put adhesive on drywall. Did I say enough nevers? Never do that. Uh, and Mark gets photographs said to him of people who do exactly that. The screws go through the mounting strap and into the wall stud. If you're mounting a flat screen television, make sure that you get the wall bracket that came with your TV. In California, those are all seismically rated and they're intended to be attached to wall studs. So follow the instructor's uh, instructions from the manufacturer. And let me just step in on that uh, part because that might be confused. There are straps that come with TVs that are just tip over straps that come with TVs. But you're talking about wall mounting is something you would buy additional to your TV. To Correct. Mount. Correct. So you notice in, in Trevin's first room, he had a television sitting on a, a counter, like a uh, credenza. In the second TV uh, against the concrete wall, that was attached just hanging on the wall. But I guarantee you it was not hanging on the wall with an adhesive fastener. It was attached to the wall with the bracket that came with the television and attached in his case directly into concrete. Uh, it, with most, most of us, it's studded walls we attach to wall studs. And there are times where you'll, whether it's a piece of furniture, like a, a dresser or maybe TV will come with some little strap with some little sprue um, that uh, is meant to not be for earthquakes. That is really just uh, because so many times these things have fallen over because kids are climbing on it. It's really a tip prevention. Uh, yeah, I want, I want to, I'll, I'll refer that a little bit. If you get, if you're concerned and you bought some furniture and you go to a retailer and they hand you a packet to secure that piece of furniture. And in that packet is what I just referred to a molly bolt or a toggle bolt, something that allows you to put it anywhere in the drywall. That's not a seismic brace. That's not an earthquake fastener. Do not use it. So um, typically these are these uh, products have been gone through extensive shake table testing or other uh, certification like from the International Code Council to assure that they're gonna hold in these big earthquake forces. Just not something you wanna mess with. So let's go to the poll question and see if I said enough nevers. Under what circumstance would you use adhesives directly to drywall? When you can't find a wall stud? When the drywall is painted with a smooth, glossy paint? If the room is your kitchen? Or under no circumstances should you do this? As in never, 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 never. If you need that to remember that by. And then when securing a flat screen TV, it is okay to use to the straps to hang the television from the wall. So we're gonna use these fasteners that we're just showing here on the screen to hang our television off the wall. That's an off the wall question. That is an off the wall question. Yes, it is. Almost there. Two more people answering the question so we can continue.
waiting a little bit. All right. And the poll and sharing the results. Never, 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 never. Under no circumstances should you ever uh, put an adhesive directly on drywall. And do not use these fasteners to hang your television off the wall. Use the bracket that comes with the television. Uh, and those are critical parts of, um, of securing TVs. The last person that was actually killed in California in an earthquake was killed when their television hit her. Uh, so um, this, is, this is of critical importance. So, oh, so no and false. All righty. So not all houses have, um, have evenly spaced uh, wall studs. Uh, some of the older homes have what, what, what's called lath and plaster walls. Uh, and finding a stud in the house um, behind the wall could be, could be difficult. Uh, so does that mean we just take a shot and put it into whatever portion of the wall we can find? Uh, it absolutely does not mean that. So, so let's give you a couple hints on how to locate a stud uh, in a lath, lath and plaster house. And that'd be the next slide. So out, outlets like plugs into the wall are often held to the wall uh, by being attached to uh, a stud that's either to the right or the left of them. So you can drill a small hole, those are called pilot holes, uh, to the right or the left of, um, of the, the outlet uh, in attempt to find the wall stud. You, would know you hit a wall stud because the uh, drill bit does not slide right in. Uh, you have resistance and you know you're drilling into something solid. Uh, then you can measure typical construction homes. Um, 16 to 24 inches or is the spacing for the stud. So that's one way to, to try to locate a stud. Uh, and you can use very small bits that you wouldn't even notice you'd put a hole in your wall. Um, you also could use that stud finder uh, and run it along the bottom of the wall. It's called a kick plate or it's a framing piece that goes along the bottom. Quite often that framing piece is nailed into studs. So the stud finder picks up the nail in the framing piece and you just go vertically up the wall because studs are positioned in the wall straight up and down, go up vertically um, and you should be able to hit a stud. And then and do the same thing, 16 or 24 inches. I, I have no idea why I included this in this slide because the average person does not have a concrete rebar floor scanner. Uh, but, but if you happen to know somebody works in the construction industry, uh, borrow one and, and you hold that up to the wall and it will actually find the studs behind the wall for you. So there, there's a couple tricks that you can use. The idea here on any wall is once you find one wall stud, you should be able to use a tape measure and find all the rest, okay? However, if you cannot find the wall stud, either that piece of furniture needs to be moved or it needs to be secured to the floor. There's no option for, let's just call it a day and maybe it'll work in an earthquake. Not when we're talking these big forces. So the only other option, if you cannot find the wall stud is to secure it to the floor. So let's look at the next poll question. If you want to secure an item in a room with studded walls, but you can't find the wall stud, which of the following is your next best alternative to securing the item? A molly, boy, a molly bolt, put an adhesive fastener to the wall, a toggle bolt, or secure the item to the floor. If you can't find the wall stud, what are you left to do? Uh, 
All right. Good job. Very good. Yeah, and stay away from molly and toggle bolts. They're, they're not seismic rated. Just don't use them. Uh, secure to the floor if you can't find the walls. What happens, Glenn, when, when, if you do and an earthquake happens? Um, so I've seen, I've seen plenty of demonstrations and they're probably on YouTube. What it does is, is the earthquake will pull and it, and it actually just puts a gigantic hole in your wall. So, so it, it, they're completely inner, ineffective. So when you're, when you're inserting a molly or a toggle, what's happening is, is the item is a certain shape. I don't know if you can see this as it goes into the wall and then it kind of umbrellas out like almost like a, just like an umbrella. And so it, the idea is that it'll then hold against the wall. However, it is not designed for earthquake forces and it'll then just put a hole in the wall the size of the umbrella portion. It just pulls right through. So and I have a question uh, through the chat to me. Um, for commercial buildings where there are metal studs, uh, do the same instructions apply? They do what you're going to use. So, so in your home, and, and some homes have metal studs. Uh, if you know that there's metal studs, you use a uh, what's called an STSM self tapping sheet metal screw. Uh, the stud finder will actually has an easier time finding metal studs than locating the nails in wood studs uh, because it's just trying, especially if you use a rare earth magnet like we had pictured, it's just trying to grab onto something magnetized uh, and those studs are. Uh, pipes are not, uh, so uh, you should be real safe using a stud finder uh, in a commercial building with metal studs. Well, okay, let me close that. Okay, uh, all right, next slide. So uh, we've emphasized finding the wall stud. We're gonna cut, we're gonna cut next to uh, a video demonstration. And in it, Trevin's gonna show us how that credenza gets anchored. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna, I wanna point out these, um, these images that you're seeing are really do a great job because you can kind of see the ghost studs behind this. I mean, you're not gonna be able to see that in your house, but you can get the idea uh, that the, uh, the item is secured to the wall stud uh, and then the adhesive gets attached to the furniture. So let's watch that video. Hey guys, good morning. My name is Trevin Reese with Ready America and Quakehold. So today we're really excited because like Glenn said, I just bought this new home. So you guys are gonna see us install these straps live in person in my actual home. So it's really important that we get this right. So what we're gonna be showing you guys today first is how to secure your TV stand. So what we have here is our furniture safety straps. Now, like Glenn said before, there are many other straps available in the marketplace. But what's great about these two is the flexible nature of them with the high bonding adhesive that Glenn was talking about. And additionally, the Velcro that you can see that attaches to this to make it easily removable and reusable. So with the TV stand, it's very important to secure that uh, with other items, including if you have bookshelves or bookcases, uh, any top heavy furniture that's in bedrooms or high traffic areas or china cap cabinets, for example, it's really important to make sure to secure those, especially if you're going to try and exit the home after an earthquake. You don't want any of those items blocking your escape path to get out and exit safely with your family. So that's why we're securing these here with you today. So what we're going to want to do first is get your tape measure out, you guys. Measure the height of your TV stand or your bookshelves or cabinets. So right now we're sitting at about 40 inches to the top of this. And so with the straps, what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure about 38 to 39 inches uh, on the wall, locate that wall stud. And what we've done for purpose of time is we've already installed a couple of these for you guys. So take your stud finder, first and foremost, check the wall. Right here, here is where our stud is going to be. So what Glenn was saying earlier and with the pilot bit, here's what your pilot bit is going to look like once you've located that stud. You're going to want to attach this to your drill and then test for that stud. You may not hit it the first time, but 
go through and you look at that anchor point again, you will find it if you just go to the side just a little bit. So what we've done is we have measured about 39 inches on this one. So you can see the strap already attached to the wall. So here it'll raise up like this. You have your washer and your screw here with an extra um, anchor point right here where you can screw this into the wall if you need to for shorter cabinets. And that will sit right on top. So what we'll do is I'll have you guys help me scoot this, scoot this uh, cabinet over a little bit to the wall so we can actually brace this in live time. And I'm gonna stand back while they move this in so I can make sure it's even. Since we are doing this live time, I wanna make sure that everything looks the way it should be by the time this is said and done. Let's get it over to the right a little bit for me. Perfect, right there. So it's not gonna be completely even every time. And this is the thing you get with live demonstrations is it's not always gonna be one third the size. So if you have taller cabinets, you wanna secure typically two thirds the height of the books for the bookshelf. That'll prevent the, the bottom portion from kicking out uh, and then causing that to rip everything out of the wall. So it's really important to secure that. So what then we're next gonna do after we have installed these straps is it's very important you guys to prep the surface with the alcohol wipes that are included in these. So this will help to form, to clean the surface and to form a stronger bond. So what we do here is we just simply wipe that down a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side, move this out of the way. And we'll give that a second to dry. Yes, yeah, so we want to wait for that to get completely dry before we install any other any of these straps. So almost there. All right, perfect. Now that we are in place, we want to remove the film right here. Exposing the adhesive, the industrial strength adhesive and allow a little bit of flexibility in the strap. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. Kevin, right why here. is that flexibility really important? So the flexibility is extremely important. So that way it's not ripping the whole weight the entire time of this cab of the TV stand out of the wall. So it's gonna allow for it to have a little flexibility, a little play, which is gonna be very helpful. And Glenn mentioned that earlier in the slides uh, when you saw the I, when you saw the items that uh, were used with strong anchor points with strong with um, items that didn't have any flexibility in the strap, so you push down on this. Make sure there's no additional little air pockets in there. So you're going to want to run your fingers along the side. We'll go ahead and do that on the other side as well, real quick. Same process, allowing a little bit of flexibility. And the other key thing that you're doing here is you're bolting it be below the back of the wall. So, yes. be so that's that way you don't see your hardware typically when you're sitting down watching TV. And what's great about these straps too, is we have different colors to match. So you find these at Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, any of the major retailers. Um, there's other straps available too, but we have different colors that you can use to match the furniture in your home. That way it's still appealing and you're not noticing any additional strapping. Uh, additionally, you can strap to the sides of the furniture too. So bring over your camera over here. So as long as you have that strong surface, you can strap it to the sides like this. That's also going to be another important feature. So now that we've done that, Glenn, I can toss it back to you. We have secured the TV stand successfully, and this is not going anywhere. Trevor, one question that just came in is, can you attach it to the back? Uh, so I wouldn't recommend attaching it to the back. Uh, it's not going to have the strongest bond because the back of this cabinet itself is not finished wood. This is unfinished wood in the back of here. So it's either to the top or to the side. And each of these straps will secure 250 pounds. So this will hold 500 pounds. And I can assure you, this is about 450 pounds. I think also if you attach it to the back and it's and it leans forward, it's going to start to pull the Velcro apart. Yeah, that Velcro, the way that it's angled, it will not uh, have that. Not, not the way you have it there, but if it was on the back, it would actually, the force would be opening it up versus here. 
it's in line with the Velcro and you can't pull that apart that way. Correct. That is correct. All right. So we have successfully secured the first item of today's demonstrations. Okay. I'm not used to the pre-recorded videos. Yes, good morning. My name is another one. He's doing it again. He well, passed uh, it two times. Just FYI, there was a, actually the question that was um, asked there was asked in the chat about strap. Uh, so, so good timing, strapping the back, um, putting the strap on the back of the furniture. And that, yeah. uh, Trevor was talking a lot about unfinished wood. I know you're going to say something about that more. Yeah, also talk about the angles of things. So, so uh, the idea is when you're when you're going parallel to the ground, uh, that force is is uh, is a zero degree shear pull, uh, much less likely to come apart. If you're putting it on the back of something, you're getting a ninety degree pull, pulling straight up on it, kind of as you alluded to, uh, and the holding capacity of the fastener is reduced. That uh, doesn't mean it's not going to work. Uh, but again, that's kind of secondary to the surface that you're attaching it to, and we'll get into that. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, this is his, this was the next one. I, uh, oh, yeah. Just to point out, and, and we could use this as an example, in addition to on top, you could put uh, attach it along the side uh, for as long as it's finished with there too. Yeah, you, you absolutely can. Uh, part of the challenge when you're going to the sides of items is they don't necessarily uh, line up with where your studs are on the wall. So you, you just have much more flexibility. And again, so the kind of the, the break even point for engineers is if you get over six feet tall, uh, then you get that kick out motion that uh, Trevin was talking about where you need to do something to restrict the bottom portion from yeah, kicking out. Most items um you don't have to worry about that though okay uh so we we secured the credenza to the wall i'm sorry and then glenn just one other relevant question uh before mm -hmm. we run. what if you need to move the credenza can you detach the strap from the piece and then reattach absolutely so uh, the the feature of both the fastener that uh, trevin had and the, the ones that we utilize um we, we uh, developed this for use in hospital and laboratory settings where changing environment and cleaning of surfaces is critical. So we had to include in that uh, the, this quick release feature of being able to take, take it apart fast. Uh, and so, um, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, all right, so we secured the credenza to the wall. Now let's secure the television to the unit below it, right? fastening the TV. When using these fasteners, remember that the adhesive tape bonds to almost every surface, uh, sometimes that's called a substrate. You want to use the fastener on a surface that's clean, smooth, and flat. So you notice the little arrows here, it's smooth and flat. We also need clean. Uh, stay away from particle board or rough, unfinished wood. Particle board is typically too lightweight uh, to hold in an earthquake without breaking. And a lot of furniture on the back of it has particle board uh, features. We do not want to put the fastener. It's, it's the same concept of not putting the fastener on drywall. It's just, it's not going to support the weight. Uh, if, if you must secure the fastener to unfinished wood, uh, the fa these fasteners come with additional wood screws uh, that you can put through to assist in mounting, and you definitely would use that. So if you gotta attach the, let's say the underside of a desk and, and you wanna attach it to the wall, you will use these uh, wood screws to hold the fastener in place. And you're relying on that as you're holding it up. Um, so so uh, let me make sure I don't have something else here. Oh yeah, we also need a clean surface on which to uh, put the adhesive. Uh, like, like has been mentioned, the alcohol pads typically come with the fastener. Trevin had one that he was able to use right there. Um, you clean the surface where uh, the um, fastener is going to be. Uh, you let it dry, and it just takes a few seconds, as you saw. Uh, not another tip, uh, avoid, if you can, using in fasteners in direct sunlight. So don't put these on your roof 
right? So these are indoor, this is for indoor usage. Uh, and with that, let's take a look at the next video where Trevin is actually attaching the television to the credenza. So this is a very industrial strength adhesive. So it's gonna be a little tougher to get these things off of here if the bond hasn't formed completely yet. So let's see what we can do. Here. You see how difficult this already is to remove. I like how the holding down the bottom level as you pulled off, made sure that the adhesive didn't come Keep out. Keep the bond on there. Yep, exactly. That Velcro is really, really strong. <laughs> yes, it is. So we're in good shape now. So, so you can see that's a very industrial strength adhesive and Velcro, which means this thing is not going anywhere. Just like that. So great shape. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, now if you guys can help me to move this thing out a little bit. Perfect. All right, guys, grab the TV for me. All right, so they're going to bring the TV here. So I'm going to make sure they're extra careful because this brand new TV and it's about the max height. So what we're going to be showing you guys today is the universal flat screen strap. So this is two flexible nylon straps that allow you to Careful on that one. Pull that forward a little bit, please, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want my TV falling off the edge. So the T what we're going to be doing using is these flexible nylon straps again. So here, let me show you these. This pack comes with the two straps here with the industrial strength adhesive, the VHB 3M, quick disconnect so you can remove and reuse. And then on the other side is a foldable uh, adhesive that will attach to the back of the TV. Additionally with it is your alcohol wipes, your hardware in case you need to attach these straps to the wall. Again, this is not used to be a mounting device for TVs. This is only for seismic bracing purposes. Do not use these to mount your TV and hang it from the wall. Additionally included is a clay cold putty and we're using that at the end to secure the feet down to the TV stand itself. So if you follow me around the back here, to see the flat surface here on the TV is where we're gonna be securing these straps. So what we're gonna to want to do is first find a point here on the back of the TV stand where you're gonna to want to secure the strap and then measure it out. You wanna get this about halfway up the height of the TV. So we're not quite there yet. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to extend this out a little bit. So now that we've done that, we find a better spot of where we're gonna to want to secure that strap. So before we do that, we need to prep the surface again. Like I said, prepping the surface is very important when securing a TV of this size too. This is 70 inch TV. The straps, the universal flat screen straps to secure anything up to a 70 inch TV. So I just barely made the cut on this one. So let's prep the surfaces here and here. And we'll wait for those to dry. We'll do the same thing on the other side. You see the two anchor points right here. We're gonna wanna go right to the right of those screws. Like a cooking show. These, these pre-done a lot of it. All right, so that one's just about dry on the TV stand. So we're gonna be removing the 3M film on top of the adhesive here. We're going to then install that right to the back, to the edge of the TV stand itself. Place, press firmly down to form that strong bond. Don't want this TV going anywhere. So we wanna make sure this thing is secured as secured as possible. Let's make sure that we are even though, good. And we'll leave a little play in this too, so we can allow for adjustments if needed. And then start at the top here, press down firmly. 
and rub that in. We'll have somebody hold the TV from the other side so that way we don't press too hard and have the TV come toppling over yet. But since we're already attached, we should be good to go. So remember, like I said, get all the sides. And also you can use a screwdriver to get these side pieces right here too to make sure those are all secured down. So now that we've done that, I'm only gonna show you guys one of these. I'll secure the other one later for you guys in the interest of time. But we're going to secure the base of the TV to the TV stand itself. So we'll take our quake hole putty that is included with these kits. Open this up. You can see the putty itself right here. And so we're gonna to wanna to use this fairly generously uh, on the bottom of these because this will prevent the TV from falling uh, backwards in addition. Uh, 2018 study revealed that about 459 children have been killed from, with falling TVs between 2000 and 2018. So this is something that we know we can avoid and eliminating any kind of death from children sitting in front of TVs or any accidents during earthquakes or children even pulling furniture over. It's a very important aspect. It's why we do this is for not only child safety, but earthquake safety and to keep your family and your friends safe. So that's why we want to make sure that these do not fall on any children because that's where children like to spend most of their time. So we're taking a generous amount here. So that would be one of the feet. And we'll just simply roll this into about a little ball, just like that. Very simple to do. This one right there. We'll take another piece. And this is actually the very first product uh, our family created um, after the Northridge earthquake. This was the first item in the Home Depot. So this became a very popular item and it's removable, reusable. It doesn't damage any of your furniture. Uh, and so Jerry, if you can help me lift this TV a little bit, just on this side, perfect. So you can see, we're going to just take this right to the bottom here. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Perfect. And now let's set down. And then we'll push down on that. The way the TV itself should do the trick, but it's always nice. And then if there's extra on the side, you can either remove that or leave it the way it is uh, just uh, for aesthetic purposes. But that should secure the TV especially a TV like this, this extra uh, strength. So you'll be able to have confidence that your TV is not gonna go anywhere and it's protecting your investment. These things aren't cheap. So it's protecting your investment. It's keeping children safe and keeping you and your friends and family safe during an earthquake. So that's how you guys secure a giant flat screen TV. To Robin, the TV. while we're still with you, uh, a couple of questions. One, um, from Rana is, can the adhesive be re removed from the furniture? Yes, it can. So what's great about that too is when you stick this stuff down to the not, furniture. Not the quake hold, but, but the, the adhesive. The adhesive. Oh yeah, the adhesive. Yes, you can. You just have to be careful while you're doing it. Uh, if you're on uh, unfinished wood, which I hope you never do, it's, yeah. So with finished wood, there's no problem moving the adhesive. It's just going to be on there. It's going to be, a strong, good is, going is to be not... a strong bond. So you're going to need some sort of prying tool, yeah. a small crowbar to get that off, but it shouldn't damage it if you do it slowly. Could you say again why the unfinished wood is an issue? Yeah, so if you're on unfinished wood, I mean, it's not going to form a strong bond. And that TV could Too easily rough. just grab it onto like little particles and that could easily just rip the adhesive right off. So like I said, do not attach these to any unfinished wood. It has to be firm on this. That's why we didn't, if you come back around to the back with me here, that's why we didn't attach it, these straps to right here. You can see this, this is already damaged a little bit. This is not the strong surface to attach these straps to. You want to secure then, them right to the top. While you're still back there, I think uh, on your TV next to where you put the straps, there are screws that are, uh, yes. uh, uh, meant to be used for a type of strap too. Is that right? Yeah. So those are, those are like, uh, those are for your TV wall mounts. So another option too, is to get a TV wall mount. Oh, yes. This doesn't have to be the only option you guys use. There are other options out there available. Don't go cheap on TV wall mounts. You want to get something strong and sturdy that will protect your investment, protect your family and your friends. 
and perhaps the actual TV wall mount, uh, if you can, is this the strongest option um, Correct. for because you're really bolting your TV to, um, onto that. All right, great. Yep. So multiple options for you guys. Something to think about. So now we've done that. We'll then move the TV, the TV stand back into place. But I think I can take it back to you guys. Fantastic. So um, news for all of you uh, out there in Zoom land, we're almost at a break. But before we get there, two important concepts Trevin covered. One is when we're putting adhesive fasteners on, we want to attach these to a smooth, flat surface. That is critical. Then two, we, we're trying to set a chemical bond and that bond does not set well on a particle board or unfinished wood, like rough, rough up wood. I, I always think of the underside of a desk, like it's all rough and don't like it. The adhesive doesn't like it either. So let's go to the next poll questions. Which type of surface is best on which to place adhesive tape fasteners? Smooth and flat, concave and rigid, rough and unfinished, moist and convex. Uh, yeah, I, was, I don't know what that is. On to which of the fo following surfaces will the VHB bond not set? Uh, metal, plastic, unfinished, um, or rough wood, uh, painted, sealed wood surfaces. So go ahead and submit your answers for that. If only all quizzes and tests and polls in our life were ones that you basically are given the answer right before the question. Right? That would be so good. Very generous. My driver's test was harder than this one. Okay, so we're almost there with enough people. A few more people, please. Complete. So we're at uh, share the results. Well, for sure, you want to use a smooth and flat surface to put the adhesive fasteners on. And um, unfinished wood. So, so these fasteners work on many, many surfaces. Substrates, they're called. Uh, smooth and flat is what we want. And that includes metal, plastic, and painted wood surfaces but it does not, we do not want to use unfinished wood. Uh, so, so with that, it's break time. Uh, and I realize we're, we're kind of uh, probably gonna have to zoom through the last, get it zoom through the last portion of this. Uh, Mark, how long do you want to take a break for? This is just a quick couple of minutes in case people need to take a, a short break, but we want to keep moving along. So uh, let's say it is, uh, let's say five minutes. Okay. And if you have any questions uh, you, that come up, uh, be sure to put them in chat. And I guarantee you somehow, some way, I'll get them. Yeah, this is a really great time. If you don't want to take a break to ask any questions going back uh, to anything we've covered earlier on any type of furniture you're wondering about, we do have uh, uh, some other uh, types coming up, uh, uh, how to secure a refrigerator and small items and, and hanging items and water heater. Uh, but uh, can you show the next slide? It's an important one. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> So I'm going to put the time we're going to resume in the chat. It just says for the recording, it won't mean much. Um, uh, I see a question. Yes. Um, heavier eye. So, so we don't really go with density, but we certainly go with weight. 
Um, adhesive fasteners, uh, the, the, these specific types, uh, have been used in commercial settings on pieces of equipment up to 1,000, I think I, the highest I saw was 1,650 pounds, and they keep getting stronger as the technology gets better. Um, so what's the difference between a fastener that you would put on a microwave oven and one you would put on a thousand pound something, right? So what's the difference is the size of the adhesive. So the surface area of the bond, and we'll talk a little bit about that, the, the bonding surface area just gets larger. And, it will, and the strap also gets larger that goes with it. So it can hold a higher capacity. Um, and it's, I, I think Ready America, most of their products um, absolutely uh, would be great for anything in your house. Uh, the safety proof line is primarily commercially based uh, in, in, that, in that we manufacture for uh, healthcare labs and hospital settings, uh, manufacturing facilities. But that doesn't mean you can't use it in your home. A refrigerator is a refrigerator. If it's a Kenmore refrigerator, it doesn't really matter where it is. It's the same fastening. So, so anyway, that's a um, good question. Yeah. Well, and we have another question in the chat. Um, it's can someone explain when to go two thirds the height of an item? I think to prevent the bottom from coming out, but I didn't understand how to do that. All right, so, so the, the rule of thumb in, in the fastening business is if an item is six feet tall or higher, we, we need to come up with a way so that the bottom does not kick out. Uh, and it's on those tall items where, um, we're fastening lower down on the item to prevent that bottom kick out would come into play. Because if you can imagine, if you had an eight foot tall bookshelf and you're fastening only to the top of the bookshelf, um, there could be a tendency in an earthquake for the bottom of the bookshelf to separate from the wall at an earthquake. So the lower down you go with the fastening, uh, that doesn't mean you can't put fasteners both places. Um, the other thing for most residential fastening, you know, most everything in your home is going to weigh under 400 pounds in most homes, uh, even refrigerators with contents, most typically. Uh, in commercial settings, uh, we, we tell folks if they have something that weighs more than 800 pounds, we recommend consulting a structural engineer for the proper method of anchorage. And if it weighs more than 1,200 pounds, we won't anchor it without a structural engineer giving guidance. Uh, and that's simply because that earthquake forces can vary dramatically by zip code. Um, much more severe shaking in some places than others. Uh, so a standardized fastening method uh, on heavier items, see forces equal to mass times acceleration, right? So. So the earthquake provides the acceleration. So the items that will move with the most force are the heavier items. So those are the ones that uh, you need to take special caution and consideration. And look at, uh, if you've got something super heavy that you don't want to move in an earthquake, uh, you're going to need some help in getting that figured out on how to do it. Well, just um, wait one more minute and we'll get started again.
All right, Glenn, let's move on. Okay, <clears throat> so next slide. You're already becoming fascinating experts. Believe it or not, you know more already than most people about how to secure stuff. You've learned why non-structural bracing is so important. You know about anchor points and mending. Uh, you know the importance of finding a wall stud uh, when securing furniture to the structure. Now, before we get into securing other common items in the home, let's discuss the VHB adhesive tape protocol, some important aspects to consider when securing items in your home. First, the protocol. Adhesives used in earthquake fasteners uh, are not like a Band-Aid. There's more to putting on a fastener than peel and stick. The process is indeed easy, but there is a proper protocol. We've already covered that the surface of the area where the adhesive is gonna go must be clean, smooth, and flat. In most cases, like the one uh, Trevin demonstrated, it's quite simple. Some appliances like new refrigerators have a slightly beveled or uneven surface. It's definitely not flat. And the solution is simple. After you clean the surface, stand or scuff up the area, there's a little Scotch-Brite uh, pad there on the, um, on the picture, uh, and, and um, make it smooth. Then, then clean it again and let it dry. Now, when you peel off the protective cover on a fastener, make sure you don't touch the fastener surface with your fingers. Oil from our fingers can get onto the fastener surface and impact the bond. So number, number one, remember smooth and flat and you can sand to make a surface smooth and flat. Uh, number two, do not touch the adhesive tape. Uh, next, when you're pressing down on the fastener like uh, Trevin demonstrated, um, you uh, hold it down for 30 seconds, okay? Just that's, that's the installation protocol from the adhesive manufacturer. Uh, so we're ensuring, we wanna ensure this bond is set and there's a way to test this. For all these adhesives at 30 minutes, the bond is set at 50% of its maximum holding power. So, so, and it takes 72 hours to hold for that bond to completely set. You can see how it's different than like a Band-Aid, right? You imagine a Band-Aid that would take three days to set. If you're using a fastener it's that, let's say, that's recommended to hold a 400 pound piece of furniture, then after 30 minutes, when you pull on the strap, that fastener should not wiggle or wobble at all. If it does, the bond is not gonna set the longer you leave it on. You need to start over smooth, flat, clean. Press for 30 seconds, pull test at 30 minutes. Do it each time and every time and you'll know you were doing this correctly. So uh, Mark, did you wanna skip the poll questions and just uh, get going? Why don't we just provide the answer here? Okay, let's just do that. So um, first we, we clean, if need be, we sand, clean again, and then we apply the fastener, okay? And then secondly, press down on that fastener for 30 seconds. That's how you're gonna ensure that bond is setting. Okay, big picture. Everything we've covered so far with regards to securing your home in advance of an earthquake involves securing furniture. A couple final comments uh, and the big picture of non-structural earthquake damage mitigation. Remember earthquake forces can move an entire building in all directions, not just back and forth. Torque and uplift occur. Sometimes the motion in one room in the house is different than the motion in another room of the house. It's one reason we recommend flexible fasteners. You want the fastener to be multiple direct, multi-directional, able to resist all directions of movement. And one thing uh, that structural engineers recommend is we never use friction or gravity as your sole method of securing furniture for earthquakes. What does that mean? We don't put risers under the front feet of a piece of furniture as the method of keeping the furniture from tipping in an earthquake. Friction pads can help limit the motion of dishes during shaking, but they're not gonna stop your entertainment center from falling over. Make sense? The best option is to secure your space. Fasten things down. 
you use the HB adhesive tape fasteners correctly, they'll, they will all, always give you around 40 pounds per square inch of surface fastener, fa excuse me, fastener surface area. That's the holding power for most of these VHB fasteners, 40 pounds per square inch. If you have an item that is one inch by six inches, that's six square inches times 40, 240 pounds. Remember, Trevin said that past two fasteners would hold about 500 pounds. You can see where he's getting his math from as well. So re keep that in mind. Uh, and then we had a couple other poll questions. So we'll just give you the answers to those. Uh, the question was, which is not a good rule of thumb? And this happens all the time in commercial. Uh, somebody is told, go down to the home store and ask the clerk what the best fastener is. Uh, and, and on the next slide for the poll question, can you do that, Mark? Uh, there you go. Uh, so, so that's just, you want to use multi-directional fasteners. I would think 40 pounds per square inch. And then you want to, fasteners, you want to have them secured to the structure or to an element that is secured to the structure, the TV to the credenza to the structure. So, but don't just go ask the sales clerk. Do your own homework on this. And then, and then we do not use friction and gravity as the sole method of anchoring things down. Uh, that's as important as not using multi bolts and toggle bolts. That's the next slide there. Mark. Glenn, the concern with asking a sales clerk is that they may not know. They may not know because probably the sales clerk hasn't been trained in uh, seismic um, non-structural earthquake damage mitigation, probably. They may be able to direct you to the earthquake fastening section in the home store, uh, which is great. Uh, but with regards to should I just use a bracket? I mean, maybe not. Maybe not the best thing to do. Okay. And then, yeah, we do not rely on friction and, friction and gravity to hold things in place. Um, another concept I want I want to get you because this will this really help you with the idea that you really have learned a lot. Uh, your, the training you have so far can go a long way to making your entire home environment safe. Remember, we're fastening shapes. A dresser can be secured the same way a bookcase can. A file cabinet can be secured the same way a refrigerator is. It's all about shapes. We're talking cubes of different dimensions. And we're talking about 40 pounds per square inch of holding capacity for each adhesive fastener. So conduct a hazard hunt, identify which items could injure someone if they fell on, secure those. Which items could block an exit or an entrance, maybe keeping first responders from getting in, secure those. Which items are connected to a gas line, secure those. Uh, so particularly, well, really, if the item, the appliance, like a dryer, is not built in, a built in gas range, you're not going to worry about. Uh, okay, so let's take a, let's take a look at some other items in your home and securing them. So, in earthquakes, uh, next picture, uh, even smaller items, picture or, or artwork, fall off the nails or hooks uh, that hold them on the wall. For very light pieces, the, the fix is simple. Uh, just putting Velcro tabs at the bottom corners of pictures will hold them in place. By lightweight, uh, that's most of the pictures you see here. Uh, see, part of the problem is, yeah? What you mean is that usually you're going to hang it on a nail uh, mm -hmm. or something, but then also add tabs at the bottom, not only. Cor correct. So that keeps the little picture from popping off the nail, and it keeps your pictures straight. That's a good feature. Um, part of the problem is a lot of times hallway pictures uh, have glass covers. Um, so for heavier pictures, we want, we, we need a better fix than simply Velcro tabs, right? Closed hooks uh, or the item that Trevor, Trevin's going to demonstrate will help keep these heavy, heavier items. So these are all 
uh, examples on your screen, you're seeing of, of the top two of these closed hook uh, fasteners, where again, we're attaching to a wall stud. Uh, so let's, let's watch the video. There was a photo here that I had against my wall. So what I've done for you guys is created uh, this clear glass so you guys can have a better idea of how we're going to secure this. So if you've seen these before, these are the amazing picture hook. So you'll see this in Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, all the major retailers. Uh, we have safety centers in there with all those supplies available. So if you get a zoom in here, you can actually see each one of these, how it gets a maze design where it locks the wire in. And there's two different ways where you can install this. You can either use a smaller nail for smaller paintings or screw for larger paintings. Now each one of these can secure up to 50 pounds. So if you have a larger painting or a larger wall hang, I would recommend using two of these. And then if it's larger, have somebody else there to assist you with it. So all the hardware is included. You can see that right there, the smaller nails or the screws, if you choose to go that route as well, which I recommend using the screws regardless of the size of the painting, just so it has that extra hold on it. So if you come over here, I can actually show you. Uh, we've kind of laid that in the wall here. And so I've gone ahead and screwed that in already and you can see that maze design. So now what I'm going to do for you is I'm gonna show you with this picture, the clear one, so you can see right through the entire time while I guide, slowly guide the wire into that maze design. And so that will lock into place. So it helps it prevent from like falling off or anything like that. And so now we even it up a little bit and set it there. And now what we're going to do next as what I mentioned earlier in the hazard time, we're going to use a little bit of this clay cold putty to prevent that from going back, uh, banging against the wall. So you can see right here, it's just a little light putty here. You don't need to use too much of this stuff at all. It's going to have the proper hold. A little bit of this goes a long way. You can secure items up to 40 pounds as long as you secure it at the base. And so we'll put it on the bottom two corners only, not necessary to go to the top. You can see right back there two corners and then you simply just push against the wall to form that nice strong bond and what's great about that too is it helps to keep all of your paintings or your wall hangs even so you're not going around the house and you're trying to adjust paintings every single time that you uh, see something just a little bit off so that's the easiest way to make sure those get installed and help protect you and your home during an earthquake <laughs> Okay, um, the important thing that, that I want you all to remember here is that for heavier pieces, the idea of securing to the wall stud uh, holds true and Trevin did that. Now, the reality of the situation is sometimes wall studs where they're located on a wall aren't where you wanna hang a picture. So welcome to earthquake country. Sometimes you've gotta make some decisions about aesthetics and home safety that may run contrary to your feng shui, right? So, so think about that, give consideration, but the recommendation holds true. We're not using toggles or mollies. We're attaching items that, and the, here's a rule of thumb, weigh more than 20 pounds. We're attaching always to wall studs, always. Uh, all right, so the next, um, the next slide, I think is a well, question. Uh, maybe clarify. Uh, yeah. Or others, um, we, we've talked uh, earlier today. You you were saying the particular type of adhesive and, and bracket. Never, never, never put uh, it on the wall. Right. Uh, we've had a couple examples of putty, or you mentioned earlier, little Velcro tabs. Um, and just to distinguish that from the what was talked about earlier. Okay. Uh, it all comes down to weight. Okay. So the putty or the Velcro. Uh, tabs uh, tw under 20 pounds. The Velcro that I was saying specifically for pictures under five pounds, little tiny pictures, not your credenza. 
right? Not your big piece of furniture. We're not putting adhesive on the wall. Here, what Trevin is demonstrating is little pieces of putty to keep the picture frame from vibrating against the wall again. But if that was done on a heavy picture and you didn't hit the wall stud, you're going to have a problem in an earthquake. So I hope that clarifies that. I'm sorry about any confusion. There was. There was. So here we see the answer to that question, which is, um, you know, we, 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 we just want to hit wall studs. Make sense? Um, do that on any heavy piece of. Glenn, if, if you had a wide piece of art, you might even be able to hang the, the wire across uh, uh, two uh, anchor points on the, that are strapped into the wall. 100% correct. Uh, and and sometimes that gives more balance to uh, to uh, the pi the picture uh, when we're um, sometimes we've done bracing in in like museums where we're 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 actually running a piece of plywood across multiple studs and then attaching the unit to the plywood that has been attached to the structure. Does that make so we got a structural item attached to the structure through through an intermediary source. So another common item, and, and again, these are little tiny, see how tiny these are? Uh, this is my Aunt Ival's uh, part of her curio collection. Uh, I, there's cats, I think there's Donald Duck I can see in there with Daisy. Uh, and they're going flying in an earthquake unless you have a putty party. So uh, this putty can be used on anything under 20 pounds by rolling it into a ball, placing it on the bottom of the item uh, and, and gently twisting. So I don't know if we've got time to show the video, uh, Mark, for that. I think so. Okay. Hi, my name is Trevin Reese with Ready America. This is our family owned business for 30 years. Today, we are inside the Big Shaker Earthquake Simulator. And we're going to teach you how to secure the items inside your home with our line of Quake Hold products. And you can find these at Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, all the major online retailers, including Amazon. All right, now I wanna show you the items that we can use to secure all of those breakables inside your home. The first product that we ever created is Quake Hold Putty. Now this is used to secure all of your breakables inside your home, anything that weighs up to 20 to 40 pounds. Now this single package of putty can secure up to 40 items inside your home. So you don't have to use a whole lot of it for each individual item. Next, we have our clear museum gel. Now this is used for your glass, your crystal, your china, any clear items that are lightweight. And you don't have to use too much of this either. And it's really important that you don't forget it's there as it is clear when removing the items. And additionally, if you have larger items inside your home, like those vases or any kind of statues, it's really important that you use something with a stronger hold, and that is the museum wax. So please make sure that you are using this for the heavier items. Now that I've shown you the Quake Hold products, let's take a look at the application. So right here, we're going to secure the glass with the Quake Hold putty itself right here. So all we want to do is roll this into balls or strips and put it at the base. For your circle items, you want to at least find three points to secure this on the edges. If it's a square item like this vase, you want to make sure it's on all four corners. So simply in order to secure this, you take it, push down at the base and secure. Twist a little bit to form that strong bond. And now if you come back over here and look at the gel, you can see two different glasses. And if you hit this glass, you can tell which one is secured using the clear gel very hard to notice that line on the bottom and additionally with the museum wax we have that one secured on the base for those heavier items now that we've completed securing all the items inside your home let's go through an earthquake because you never know an earthquake can happen just like that All right, now that we experienced the 6.8 magnitude earthquake, you can see all the items that are down on the floor. So this is all your breakables. This isn't gonna be plastic cups, typically. This is all your break broken items on the floor. 
And it's really important, as you guys saw me do, is to drop cover and hold on under something sturdy during an earthquake as soon as you possibly can. Because the number one injury during an earthquake is people stepping on broken glass. As you can see here, the three items that we secured with the gel, the putty, and the wax have not removed from the shelves during the earthquake. This is how you secure your home during an earthquake to prevent any sort of accidents to help keep you, your family, and your friends safe. For the final step, I wanna show you guys how to remove the quake hold putty, the wax, and the gel. So we're going to use the quake hold putty on this wine glass. First you wanna do, it's really important, is always remember to twist at the base. Twist and lift. That is how you're gonna remove the quake hold putty from the items, especially if they have a stem on them, so it doesn't actually break the top portion of the glass or any of your breakables. Very simple and easy to remove. You can see that no residue is left on the surface. It's very easy for the gel. And for the wax, if it's a little tough, you can use a little bit of fishing line, or if you need, you can have any of the dental floss to help scrape up the remainder and then clean the surface. And that is how you secure all the items inside your home to prevent any sort of, earth, uh, any sort of damage to your family, your friends during an earthquake. Fantastic. All right, next slide. There are a lot of solutions you can use to keep uh, kitchen cabinet doors closed in earthquakes. Um, baby latches do the trick. Whoa. I went up far ahead here. Let me get back. You're out of control. <laughs> can you go back one, please? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hey, that's the picture. Um, um, baby latches do the trick. Heck, some people even use hair scrunchies uh, to close the door. Uh, but what we're going to show you, and there, there's all options. You can see all kinds of options. One of them I like uh, was actually uh, invented by um, an engineer at Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And I, we're going to show a quick video. Uh, and notice how these get installed without tools and they activate in earthquakes. They're called seismo latch. So check this out. Um, whichever, whichever brand you choose to, to use, it's important you pick something. Secure the contents, keep those cabinet doors in your kitchen uh, from flying open and contents flying out in an earthquake. Uh, the kitchen uh, tends to be the most dangerous room in the house. Uh, so you can take steps to keep those doors, uh, cabinet doors closed. Uh, okay, then we, uh, next, securing a water heater. Um, in California, uh, it's code required to secure water heaters. Um, that, is, that is part of the deal, but an amazing amount of them are not secured. Uh, so we're gonna look at a video sh that shows a properly braced water heater. Uh, you can get products to secure water heaters online and this graphic shows a wonderful way of, of securing things. So the water heater must be up on a base, which it is. Uh, here we have uh, wood that is extended across four different studs and the actual fastening is attached to that uh, and it wraps around uh, the water heater. Uh, so uh, can we show that video? I, I think I know whose house this is. It's about 10 feet from me right now. Yep. Uh, the,
this doesn't have the wood on the back, but it was bolted into the studs within the wall through the through the. Okay. Uh, that that is really essential. I don't I don't know if any of you remember that show MythBusters, but they they showed what happens to a water heater under pressure, uh, and it just shot like you know. 500 feet up into the sky. Uh, so yeah, secure those things. Uh, and then the last thing we wanna cover is securing well, a storage. Yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead. Why does the water heater have to be on the block? Is, is simply that's a part of the California building code. I think they don't want, I, I think there are a number of reasons and I don't know them because I'm not a plumber, uh, but there are a number of reasons where it needs to be elevated off the floor. It's you know, the only thing I can relate it to is when we, we got our water storage barrels, it was also recommended we elevate those up off the floor. Uh, so I'm not, I, I really do not know, but I bet you can find that answer online as to why does my water need, heater need to be up on a pedestal, but that's part of the code requirement. Okay, securing a storage rack. Uh, for items like storage racks or bunk beds, anything that has a vertical post uh, like seen in this uh, picture, uh, securing for tip overs is really easy. Take a look at the, ins the inset drawing here. Uh, the this, this same strap that is the furniture strap can be used to create a lasso. Uh, and then that lasso gets attached. It goes, that lasso wraps around the post, the vertical post, and it gets attached to the wall stud. Uh, and you can get these pre-made kits uh, online. Uh, I don't know that they're in home stores. I, I don't know that I've seen them, but I do know they are available online for either storage rack fastening kit or you search bunk bed fastening kit. It's the same fastener. It's anything that's shaped like that that's got a vertical post. Uh, and I think somebody saw the uh, asked a question in the chat about the weight for the putty. Uh, I heard Trevor Trevin mention up to forty pounds. You know, um, safety proof sells uh, Quake Secure. We sell our own version of that putty. And we, we say 20 pounds or under. So uh, check with the manufacturer for whatever weight limit that they give you. Uh, and then uh, make sure you don't exceed that. But um, so I, I but, yeah, go ahead. Answer about the water heater. Maybe others uh, did this. I did this Google search you encouraged us to do. Oh, and go ahead. What this plumbing website will, uh, says that according to the code, it's uh, in case that, especially if you're like in a garage where there may be a spill of a flammable liquid that you don't have your 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 pilot for the water heater close to that flammable liquid on the floor so you're rising it up above that so it's to prevent uh, okay fires and explosions as well you got fires down on the uh, because the flame is at the bottom of the uh, water here that makes sense so there you have it some of the basics of non-structural earthquake damage mitigation there are other tips and tricks common in the industry uh, like using high strength monofilament fishing line uh, to secure statuary uh, there are different uh, plates and bracing methods out there and seemingly every month somebody comes up with a new method of securing something so remember uh, your water heaters uh, remember that code requirement and that there's a correct way to go about doing that. Stay connected, join CERT, share your tips and tricks, stay in touch with the Earthquake Country Alliance and industry experts, secure your space and thrive after an earthquake. Okay, over to you, Mark. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, thank you all for participating that uh, you, uh, because you have been with us, uh, as promised, you, we will be sending you a starter kit that will include a, 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 a for to secure your space, a, include a furniture strap kit, a TV strap kit, and two of the seismo latches. And what we really encourage you to do, or remind you, is when you install these, first of all, when you receive these, do install them. Don't just let that sit on, don't put it on your bookshelf and then have it just sit there, actually put it on the back of the bookshelf, uh, actually use it, put it on your TV, secure two cabinets with the, what you get. Uh, or if you've already done all that work in your in your place, help secure someone else's with the materials. And if you would, uh, please take a picture or a video of you doing that work is uh, the more people see other people doing this, uh, the more likely that they are to do the same thing. We'll all be more, prepared to survive and recover when the earthquake happens. So um, this is uh, has been recorded. We will be, be putting it online and we'll uh, so you can look for it on, on, at earthquakecountry.org. 
the recording of it uh, by next week or so. Uh, so you can let other people know about it as well. We do plan to keep offering these workshops and trainings uh, uh, in the fall and, and next spring again. Uh, we do hope that some of you may even take this on in helping your community and uh, maybe even form a little business doing this uh, uh, at it because that is needed. And we do get a lot of people asking, you know, who can come do this for us? And there, there's just not enough uh, people doing this type of work in their community. Uh, so that's something that you, know, you could take on. Uh, uh, Doing it. We also do provide these materials as part of our ECA mini awards program. So if, you, if you're not a member of ECA, definitely join so you can get information on that. We provide $500 to $1,000 worth of these supplies to uh, nonprofits and other organizations who, who apply to get that, um, that mini award. Uh, uh, and that will be coming out in October. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And finally, we do have new set of instructions you can go to earthquakecountry.org slash step one a new document you can download that really has simple summaries of what to do for eight different object types um, most of which we've covered today so you can use that you can share that and um, one thing that we say often in this is read the instructions that come with the ob uh, the materials uh, you know this is additional guidance but always follow the manufacturer's instructions uh, we've put the link to the survey in the chat. Please click that now in the chat, the survey monkey link, uh, complete that brief survey. And at any time you have additional questions, you can email us at info at earthquakecountry.org. Here is Glenn's information, also Trevin's. If you would like to reach out to either of them, um, you can email or call. And thanks for the comments uh, in the chat for the just being useful and informative. We like to uh, uh, make sure that it is and uh, and uh, you know if uh, do complete the survey and share that and if there's anything that you find could have been explained better do tell us that we want to improve and, and make sure that's clear and uh, it's, it's uh, definitely in our interests and all of and for everyone okay so uh, that is it thank you all for participating and have a good rest of your day